Hey, how's it going? I thought that I would show you a video of my gear that I would use in the event of a shit hits the fan scenario. Um, so I'm just going to pan around a little bit here. You could have a quick gander. And then I'll just go through the stuff kind of one at a time. Um, starting at the top there. That right there is my uh, plate carrier, okay? So this here plate carrier is uh, kind of a budget model, at least the nylon portion is. It's by Rothko, which is um, kind of low end, very budget minded. But uh, whatever, it's, uh, it's holding up pretty well so far in training. And uh, inside I have some uh, high quality plates, which I'm not going to go um, take out. But they're rifle plates. They're rated to stop uh, 308s and, four, and um, AK rounds. They happen to be uh, titanium alloy plates, so which makes them a lot lighter than the stuff that you would see our men and women in uniform wearing. Um, what you might notice on this uh, plate carrier is that I have nothing attached to it, right? It's completely slick. And I've tried all manner of uh, um, uh, setups on, on the front and the back with pouches and various things, you know, to hold uh, different kinds of gear. But ultimately, I chose to go back to the nice and plain. I didn't like having all this stuff on here. So, like, if I go prone, for instance, <clears throat> this is very comfortable. Um, also, I didn't like indexing magazines from right here, and I certainly didn't want anything on my uh, kind of upper chest area right here. So this is working out great for me, and it comes off. It, uh, it's, I'm able to take this on and off very easily. Um, and also, with with the back being slick, uh, it makes it very easy to wear a pack on the back. Um, I've tried different kinds of uh, hydration systems on the back, uh, bladder systems. Um, I used a backpack style, or I should say a, a style that had um, uh, shoulder pads. And I've also tried uh, the kind that attaches via the molly webbing. And I'm afraid I didn't like it, so that's just nice and plain is what I got right, going on right here. Alright, next, let me get back to the camera here. Next, let's talk about my primary weapon, which is a uh, AR-15 variant. This one happens to be um, a Smith & Wesson M&P-15 that I've uh, made numerous, uh, I guess, upgrades to that I'll talk about uh, in succession, starting from the top. Okay. So, first of all, you'll notice that there is an optic on top of this weapon. It happens to be an Aimpoint Pro, which is a patrol rifle optic. And that there is the uh, entry level Aimpoint red dot. Thing is amazing. Um, for 400 bucks, give or take, uh, you get a quality optic that includes a mount. That's very important because a quality mount can cost 150 bucks. So it includes the mount, it includes the uh, lens covers. And it has a pretty insane battery life. Uh, one battery, um, I can have it continuously on at uh, level 7 or less, you know, going up to 10. Uh, at level 7 or less, continuously on for three years. So that's very important for a, um, a, uh, a prepper type mentality. Uh, someone who might expect an extended shit hits the fan scenario. So I'm very pleased with that. The mount itself, it's not super pretty, and it's not super cool, I guess, but it's 100% functional. And really that's what's important. You know, if I wanted to upgrade, like I said, I'd probably go with the LaRue tactical model. It's the, um, what is it, the LT-150? And that one is in the neighborhood of 150 bucks. Of course, if I went ahead and did that, maybe I just would just get a whole new optic. There's a... The Aimpoint T1 Micro Dot, which is like super tiny, 
and super lightweight. It adds almost no um, you know, encumbrance to the weapon. And that's what I would love to have, but that thing costs a lot of money. All right, next, we've got the, um, my backup iron sights. Now you'll notice that the, the iron sights are uh, uh, folded down. And I like to have a nice clean sight picture when I'm looking through my red dot. But deploying the, the, you know, the iron sights is a snap. See that? And those are some quality sights from a company called GG and G out of Arizona, out of Tucson, Arizona. That uh, they make just some hardcore, high-end stuff. I mean, those sights right there, the front and back together, a little over 200 bucks just for the just for the sights. And then if you include the fact that I um, upgraded the front sight post on the front sight there to a tritium model, which of course is a self-luminescent night fighting sight, well that just bumps up the cost on those sights, but you know, what is your life worth, right? So those are, that's, those are the sights for this rifle. Okay, next thing you'll notice is that the, uh, that is not the standard front handguard right there. This right here is a 13 inch free floated rail system from a Parallax Tactical here in my hometown of San Diego that uh, man I just love because it's very lightweight and right here where you would hold it is nice and slim so you know you don't require any extra like uh, rail covers or anything like that it's just good to go right out of the box you might say and it's got a full length Picatinny rail up on top and it's got Picatinny rails here at the 6 o'clock and at the 9 o'clock and at the uh, excuse me 6 o'clock 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock position for plenty of attachment points and also some Picatinny rail right here also for people who like quick detach points for their um, for their uh, um, got sling systems it's got four of them it's got a QD point right here, a QD point right there, and of course on the other side as well. Uh, so that's got the standard 16 inch uh, you know barrel on there, it's got the standard A2 flash hider, and uh, back here I've got an upgraded uh, charging handle uh, from the guys over at BCM uh, this is their Gunfighter Mod 4 with the uh, medium extended latch. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, for people who are into ARs, of course you, you recognize that the, the, the Magpul furniture. Uh, back here we've got the, um, the CTR stock with the friction lock. That's the friction lock, which makes a nice rock solid um, stock system. It's not going to give you any play or wobble. And the um, the pistol grip is not an A2 pistol grip. That there's the uh, Magpul MOE Plus Grip Plus. And what I like about the uh, MOE Grip Plus, of course, is that um, it's got this rubberized texture. It's very grippy. I love it. And uh, you know the MOE has a fantastic grip angle, which is also uh, to my liking. And it has this extremely awesome. Very simple and very functional uh, storage compartment. So you could put like lubricant or batteries or spare parts or whatever in there. And then of course the winter trigger guard. Now all the internals on the lower are standard, so there's no innovations there. But um, I do have a, um, a heavy buffer from Spikes Tactical here. That if I were to open up this rifle, you could see their cool little spider logo on there. Um, see anything else about the rifle I should mention? Oh, so this is just a. Uh, it's not important, but this here right here is a, you know, a, a, a dust cover I got from Spikes Tactical, which has the uh, Arabic word for infidel and an American flag. So that's kind of cool. Purely decorative, right? So that's basically the rifle. Oh, wait, how could I forget? So I went through a number of um, sling systems trying to determine what was going to work out best for me. And let me see if I can find it. 
But, uh, well, I guess I can't. But in the end, I'm, I'm, I'm currently using a one-point sling from uh, Blackhawk. I think it's their Storm Sling. And what I'd like to point out to you is the attachment point, which I've tried many different kinds. This right here is a, a QD attachment point from the guys at Noveski. So it's really awesome. I just clip, you know, pop it in and out. It's good to go. It's super fast. When it's not uh, being used, you don't have any annoying little ring right here that makes a bunch of noise. And it's, you know, it's flush. It's um, low profile. It's good to go. So that's my primary uh, weapon. Okay, moving down. We have what's called a battle belt. Okay, this is a kind of a system that I'm going to wear around my waist. And battle belts are all the rage these days in the, um, I don't know, tactical community and people who take like uh, carbine classes, that kind of thing. So I'll just go through the whole system. Uh, technically speaking, well, first of all, okay, when I say uh, my war, this is, you know, my war belt, it's comprised of various components. But usually when, you know, technically the actual war belt portion is just one component in the overall system. So let's, let's go ahead and discuss that. So over there, you see there's a belt right there. That's actually a rigger's belt from the guys over at London Bridge. And if I go over here, you can see that there's like a little um, attachment point that in an emergency can be used to click in and repel, right? Or belay down the side of a, you know, some kind of mountain or a wall or whatever. Right in there, you just hook in right there and, and, and you're, you know, good to go. This belt is rated to hold way more weight then you'll ever be carrying, that's for sure. I mean, you could use that strap to pull, pull a car out of a ditch or whatever. And that's the internal belt, okay? You can use any manner of internal belts for your war belt system. But right now I'm using that Riggers belt and it's working out great. Okay, next is the outer belt, almost like a sheath. That's this portion right here that um, the internal belt slips inside of okay and it just velcros it's just there's like a like a velcro system that allows you know you to access the inner belt and take it out or whatever and so that war belt what it does it provides molly webbing so you can attach all your goodies to it and it also has padding on the other end, very comfortable padding. This war belt right here, this outer belt portion, happens to be from Condor Tactical, which is, um, it's working out great for me. I mean, you could certainly uh, spend a lot more money on some other stuff like HSGI, like, uh, who are some of the other big guys? Well, anyway, Ares, Ares Tactical. A lot, a lot of the high-end manufacturers, which happen to be, you know, here here in the United States, they're making uh, war belts, and that outer belt alone is going to be in the neighborhood of like probably eighty to hundred bucks. Condor Tactical is made in China, but it's a pretty good product, and the price is like you can't beat it. I think that 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 component alone is like maybe twenty, possibly twenty-five bucks, depending on where you get it, and. Uh, that price point is awesome and it's just working out great. Okay, let's move over here. So over there is another Condor product. That's a triple kangaroo pouch. So kangaroo, meaning it's got a pocket like here. See, you can see it's like double stacked. So this front pouch is for, is, is for uh, um, pistol, pistol magazines. And the, bottom, the back part is for your rifle magazines. And it's a, you know, so it's, it's a triple kangaroo pouch, molly pouch, that uh, is working out fantastic. And you can slip on one belt and be out the door with a ton of firepower. If you consider you've got one magazine in your primary weapon, one magazine in your pistol, plus three for each on your belt, 
that is a formidable amount of, of ammunition to have just basically on one belt. And if I wanted to, if like if things were so bad that I needed, I felt the need to have even more ammunition, then I have a a, a double triple mag pouch, molly pouch that I could put on the uh, plate carrier there, which would you know bump me up to six uh, mags on my chest there for a total of. Uh, you know, nine on my person for each weapon, plus the one in the weapon, uh, which is, you know, that's some, that's some heavy fighting, or you'd be anticipating some very heavy fighting to have that much ammunition. As it stands, four is good to go, and very manageable in terms of weight and, uh, you know, bulk. Okay, next component. Now the stuff on the, on, this is what, what, that inner portion right there that you're looking at, you know, is going to be on my back, all right? So you don't want to have a lot of stuff on your back. Um, one of the reasons that people talk about is if for some reason you were to fall down and you had something hard on your back, well, that could, like, jack up your, uh, your vertebrae. So those are nice and soft and very low profile I could totally sit in a car seat with that and, and be no problem sit in a chair or whatever and uh, wouldn't feel the least bit uh, uncomfortable so okay there on the left dorsal portion you see a dump pouch that's been rolled up that's that there's a tactical tailor dump pouch that I can deploy and if I'm like in some kind of firefight or I'm in training or whatever and I have a spent mag and I got to change out mags, well, you don't necessarily want to throw your mags on the ground, right? Mags, uh, especially in a shit hits the fan situation where, um, you know, you don't know when you're going to be uh, resupplied. You don't know when more stuff is going to be manufactured. You're going to hold on, uh, you know, hold on to your, your gear because it's going to be very important. So this thing will be able to hold maybe six, seven rifle mags in there uh, while you're fighting. And then later on you can withdraw the mags, refill them, put them back in the pouches or whatever, and then just go ahead and quickly roll up this thing and you're back in business. All right. So right now, I don't, I'm not big on medical kits. Um, I've... I actually own a couple different medical kits. I've got a uh, government issue IFAC, you know, individual first aid kit. And it's just super big and bulky. It's super annoying. Um, so what I will do is probably just carry some uh, what they call Israeli battle bandages. That uh, We can talk about that later, but just some bandages. I could throw that in a cargo pocket. And so that, that particular pouch right there holds a battle tourniquet. Okay, tourniquet. So that's very important. And that's been shown to save lives um, overseas and also in um, EMTs and, you know, first responders here on the homeland, home front. They have found that uh, a properly used tourniquet, it can be a lifesaver. All right, next up. Of course, my sidearm, your secondary weapon. So, uh, that's actually not my um, go-to sidearm, you might say. This happens to be a Glock 19. Lovely little gun, but uh, being 9mm and being relatively small, not much bigger than a 38, I would consider this my uh, discrete carry weapon. Okay? So, if I was going to do open carry, I would use my Glock 21, which is in a 45 caliber. Um, now, why it's on the system right now is just for like illustrative purposes. Um, I wanted to show you the actual holster system, which is a Kydex holster from the guys at G-Code. That um, if I open this up, you'll see that there's a. Uh, The Kydex is attached to the inner belt, all right? And uh, that's the attachment point, okay? But the actual Kydex is this, okay? And it's got these, uh, what they call RTI attachment points. 
that slip right in and that you saw how easy I um, you know with remove that and so I can use the one belt system with any uh, pistol that I might have provided I've got a, a holster with this RTI attachment point they just slip in and out and so I like that kind of versatility and eventually I'm going to get one of these Kydex holsters for my Glock 21 and uh, you know then I'll be able to just move the weapons back and forth and have one belt to serve all my needs with regards to that you see how easily it just pops right back in and um, boom it's right there okay last thing like I said if I needed to be on some kind of extended patrol or I needed to go like many miles or who knows maybe I'm out in the wilderness and you want to carry more gear than what I'm showing here then you want to probably take some kind of pack that there is a uh, compact assault pack it's really not much bigger than a student's book bag but but the compartments are very thoughtfully engineered and uh, I can carry a lot of good stuff in there and that's where I would hold my water bottles to meet my hydration needs in that there pack so there it is you guys that's that's my basic kit that I would wear in a uh, without rule of law situation in a uh, shit hits the fan situation any kind of breakdown of society any kind of situation where I thought I gotta protect my wife and my four-year-old baby and uh, I'm not expecting any help from any you know other first responders or whatever this is what I'm gonna be relying on alright hope you enjoyed that thanks a lot take it easy later